Hi, I'm Dave, and I'm making my gear. Hi, everyone. Welcome to part 11 of the ESP32 sampler. We are at the finish line. Well, we're almost at the finish line. We're rounding the home stretch. So today, we're going to take a look at the schematic, and we're going to take a look at the PCB layout that I've done in KiCad, and some of the design choices that I've decided on for this project. I've decided that I'm going to be sending the board overseas to be made, because I think the quality will just be better. And while I've done that in the past, I've always had somebody look over my board and my schematic for me to make sure that there weren't any errors, right? So I would love if any of you out out there if you happen to have experience making schematics and PCB layouts please take a look at what I've done the medium article is below it's got the schematic got the PCB layout take a look at it let me know if there are any glaring errors in the design aspect of it before I decide to send it off that would be greatly appreciated. So without further ado, let's get into KiCad and take a look at the schematics and then we'll take a look at the PCB layout. So, here's the schematic that I've whipped up in KiCad. So let's zoom in real quick. Here's my ESP32. This is our chip that we're using. Nothing too crazy here. Record and loop set button. They both have pull-up resistors because those pins actually don't have programmable pull-up resistors. So I just use 10K. I think those look pretty good. Then I've got my LED stored and LED recording. Just a basic LED circuit. Here's the green LED with a 330 ohm resistor. Red LED, 330 ohm resistor. Easy peasy. Then here's my MIDI in circuit. I'm using a 5-pin DIN. This is a basic opto isolator circuit that I found online. Super simple. Pin 4 of the MIDI in goes through a 220 ohm resistor and into pin 2 of the opto isolator and pin 5 goes to pin 3. And then we have a diode here that's just making sure those signals stay separated, right? We power the opto isolator with 5 volts. We've got a 4.7K pulling pin 7 to ground, a 470 ohm resistor pulling pin 6 to 3.3 volts, and that goes to the MIDI input of the ESP32, and pin 5 goes to ground. Then we have our MIDI through. Now, I've done this with hardware instead of software, so all this does is it takes the MIDI input that is going to the ESP32, chucks it through a Schmidt trigger, and then takes that output and puts it through through another five pin DIN connection. The nice part about this circuit is that it's good because there's no software involved in this at all. All we're doing is buffering the signal through the MIDI in port back out any other sort of like MIDI gear that we're using, right? Then we've got our audio out jack. I've got a very simple low pass filter put on the output just to take some of the high frequency stuff out. It's very subtle and the footprints that I chose for this are great because I can just desolder stuff and put in different values if I decide that the slope is too dramatic I can just swap out those components but for the time being it's a very as I said it's a very mild low pass filter I've got our keypad matrix that we have got before we'll talk about the design of this when we get into the PCB and then finally we've got our microphone in and line in I wanted to put a filter on it to kind of get rid of some of that grinding noise that I was getting without the filter and I'm using an LM 358 filter this is based on an article on the Texas Instruments website. And the cool thing about this filter is that it rolls off like 10K. It's not very aggressive, but it's enough to kind of get rid of that grinding stuff. If I want the filter to be more aggressive or less aggressive, I've chosen footprints for these components that I can easily just desolder them and throw in some different capacitors and resistors to get a different slope for the cutoff. And the other cool thing about this is that it's got an offset built into it. So we're adding the offset back to the signal to make sure that it's centered at 1.65 volts for the input of the ESP32. And then I've got a switch. So I'm able to switch between the microphone or the line in, and that's just going to allow us to isolate what we're recording. So, you know, like I'm not recording the microphone and the line in at the same time ever. So that's it for the schematic. Nothing that complicated. But again, take a look. Let me know what you think. See if there are any errors, and we'll go from there. Here's our PCB. Now, 
let's just talk about the PCB layout really quick. You know, I was him and hawing about what I'm gonna do for the enclosure on this thing. And given the sort of basic nature of the sampler, I've decided that I'm gonna kind of go for like a pocket operator feel. So for the keypad matrix, I'm gonna be using these standard six millimeter push buttons, but I'm gonna be buying ones that have a soft feel to them. So you won't hear the clicks when I actually press them. So that's one choice that I've made. Another thing that I've done here is I'm going to be using 20 pin headers for the ESP32 to connect it to the board. Now, the reason for that is if I ever want to do a Rev2 or anything like that, and I have these extra IO on the ESP32 that I haven't used, I can easily patch in to these points and I'll be able to make those additions without having to rebuild the circuit on a breadboard. Does that make sense? And then the other cool thing about this is that if I happen to fry the ESP32 for whatever reason, I can easily just swap it out and put in a new module, upload the code, and I'll be ready to go. Okay, then I've got my MIDI in and MIDI through and its associated circuitry. Uh, so this SW35 is our switch that we're gonna use to switch between either the microphone module or the line input. Now what I'm gonna do is use a three pin male header and I'm gonna use those little terminal connectors. So I'll be able to easily swap between the two without having like a physical switch that will eventually wear down, right? Then I've got my line in, I've got my microphone and my line out. Okay, and then here's our record button with associated LED and our loop set button with its associated LED. Okay, now the board is approximately 15 centimeters horizontally and it's about 11 centimeters vertically. So yeah, that's about it. It's a super basic board. It's kind of large and I'm using all through hole components, but I want to kind of use up some of the stuff that I have on hand. And uh, yeah, I think it'll be okay for the first rev of this sampler. I'd love to hear what you think of the design. Let me know in the comments. Let me know if you see any errors in the schematic. Maybe something that you think would look better in terms of the board layout. I really want to get this hammered down before I send it out. And I'll keep everybody posted as to when I actually send it out. And it's estimated time of arrival back here in my hands. So in the next video, I'm hoping that we will be soldering and making any final tweaks to the software. And then we'll do a full on sound demo. All right. So if that's something that interests you, please subscribe to the channel. For those who have subscribed, I salute you and thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.